Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a final year medical student at Cambridge University, and today we're gonna to be comparing the iPad Pro with the normal iPad, specifically the handling of the Apple Pencil, and more specifically, if you're a student, whether you should buy the iPad Pro or the iPad. To answer this question, uh, earlier today, my friend Charlotte came over. She has the 2018 iPad, and I have the iPad Pro, and we filmed ourselves making notes on each other's iPads uh, to see if we could tell what the difference was between the two. Now, whenever I watch comparison videos like this, I always wish that the YouTuber um, would give the conclusion up front so that if I don't wanna watch the whole video, I don't have to. So here we go. Um, in summary, the experience of making notes on an iPad Pro versus an iPad was pretty much identical. My friend Charlotte could notice no difference between writing on her iPad and my iPad Pro, and I could only notice a very, very, very slight difference between the two user experiences. Therefore, if you're a student, I would probably recommend that you save the £300 or $300 and you buy the normal iPad with the Apple Pencil instead of the iPad Pro. So that's out of the way. Um, if that's all you wanted to know, then thank you for watching the video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. But we're gonna spend the rest of this video elaborating on that. Firstly, I'm gonna show the quick clip of me and Charlotte reacting to using each other's iPad so you can see what that experience was like for us if you're into that sort of thing. Secondly, I'm going to elaborate on the main differences between the iPad Pro and the iPad, namely the 120 versus 60 hertz refresh rate and the slightly increased gap between the screen and the and the glass, which is what everyone is talking about. And finally, we're going to end with some of my own personal thoughts on pricing of iPad Pro versus iPad and why I would still personally probably get the iPad Pro instead of the iPad, but I'll explain why this is not a recommendation that I would kind of impart upon everyone. As usual, timestamps for everything are gonna be in the video description, so please don't watch this whole video if you don't have time, just skip to the appropriate timestamp. But now we're gonna to cut to the video of me and Charlotte testing each other's iPads earlier this morning um, and pretty much showing how we found no difference between the two. Okay, so we're gonna go Notability and we're just gonna create a new note. Let's just kind of doodle a bit or kind of write how we would normally write notes and then we'll swap iPads and we'll see if we can notice the difference between the two. Okay. So, hello, <laughs> my name is Ali. So you're used to writing that, you've been using it for the past few months. Yeah, I'm really yeah. used to writing on this, I've been using it for the past like six months to a year, something yeah. like that. Let's swap now and let's see if we can if we can actually notice a difference. Right. Swapping pencils as Swapping well. Pencils as okay. well. Right, here we go. This is the moment of truth. Okay. What do you think? What do you think of the iPad Pro versus your one? I can't tell a difference. <laughs> I know what you mean. This is pretty legit. This is really, really good. This is really responsive. Okay, so there's loads of other videos on YouTube where people are comparing the specifications of the iPad versus the iPad Pro. We're not really gonna be talking about technical comparisons in this. We're just gonna be talking about what it's like as a student using the device. And as a student using this device, there's really not much difference between this and that. I can't, when I'm writing, I feel no difference at all. So that was our first experience of using each other's iPads. And as you saw, the difference wasn't particularly noticeable, but there were some differences in, in the user experience between the two. There were basically two differences that I noticed between the iPad Pro and the iPad. The main one is that with the iPad, there was a very slight increased input lag between the Apple Pencil touching the glass and the words appearing on screen. And here is a slow-mo side-by-side -side comparison of the two. And as you can see, on the iPad Pro, it's pretty much instantaneous between when you touch the glass and write the thing. Whereas on the iPad, there is a slight delay. This has been slowed down four times its normal rate, so you can notice the difference quite clearly here, but in real life, it's really not that noticeable. If you are considering um, the iPad Pro versus the iPad, and you're thinking that maybe this input lag is gonna make a difference for you, I would really suggest you go to an Apple store and try both of them out. You will notice a very slight input lag on the normal iPad that is just completely gone with the iPad Pro. Now, the reason for this is, is twofold. Firstly, there is that increased gap between the glass and the screen on the iPad, which is not there on the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro has a laminate screen, so it it, it looks and feels as if you're writing on the screen itself. And secondly, the iPad Pro has the 120 hertz refresh rate, which means stuff appears more smoothly. And you kind of notice this when swiping between apps, you notice that, oh wow, the frame rate of this is a lot higher. Um, that was the first thing I noticed the first time I tried out an iPad Pro. And that is, again, contributes to this slightly noticeable input lag on the iPad that's not there on the iPad Pro. So that was the main difference, uh, this input lag. Uh, the second very minor difference was that the iPad, the iPad Pro feels like a very premium product. The laminate screen feels lovely. The normal iPad felt slightly more plasticky than the iPad Pro because the screen is not fully like laminated. I don't know about all the technical details. There are loads of other YouTube videos for that, but I could, I could tell holding it in my hand that ah, oh, this feels slightly inferior in quality to the iPad Pro. And maybe that's placebo effect, but. I don't think it is. I think there is a noticeable decrease in quality between the iPad Pro and the iPad. Those were the two main differences. And of course, if you are using graphics intensive applications, then 
the iPad Pro is gonna is gonna perform better than the iPad. But you know, Charlotte has been using the iPad 2018 for the last few months so since she's got it, and she said there was li there's literally never any time that she's felt that the iPad is a little bit slow. I noticed that it was very slightly slower than my iPad Pro. Like for example, when I'd click on a button in Notability, there would be like a very slight lag between you know clicking on the button and the button click getting registered when, for example, changing pens and changing colors and things. Charlotte didn't really notice that. I suppose she's gotten used to it. But as someone who's been using an iPad Pro for the last few months, uh, it was it was slightly noticeable. So I suppose the real question is, and if you're still with us, then you're probably interested in this, is that, you know, there is a £300, $300 difference between the base model of the iPad Pro and the base model of the iPad. Do these differences justify that £300 price tag? And as I said at the start of the video, for most people, for most students, if you're a student looking to just take notes, browse YouTube, maybe edit some more documents, do student-y sort of stuff. There's pretty much no reason for you to get the iPad Pro unless you have a lot of spare cash to burn and and you like want the top of the range thing. Because the iPad Pro is, is the Rolls Royce, the iPad is really good and is half the price, but it's not quite the Rolls Royce, if that makes sense. For me personally, knowing now what I know about those two, I would still probably buy the iPad Pro. And here's the reason for that. So the iPad Pro is a, is a 300 pounds price price difference between between the iPad. I anticipate that I'm gonna be using the iPad Pro for at least the next three years. So three years is about 150 weeks. So 300 pounds spread out over 150 weeks comes out to about two pounds a week. So the calculation I'm thinking in my head is would I pay two pounds every week to have the benefit of an iPad Pro over a standard iPad? And I think the answer to that question for me personally is yes. The reason relates to those two things. Firstly, the input lag between kind of the pencil and, and writing stuff on it which like I said, is, is not very noticeable, but it is there. Secondly, the plasticky sort of feelingness of the of the iPad versus the iPad Pro. Now the reason why I think the iPad Pro is worth that two pounds a week extra, um, extra price point is that for me personally, I would find it less of a pleasure to use the iPad than it is to use the iPad Pro. Like when I was using Charlotte's iPad, I, I, I was thinking this is good enough, but it's not an absolute joy to use. Whereas when I use my iPad Pro, it really is an absolute joy to write on. I feel excited when I'm taking notes and lectures. I feel excited about whenever I have a new idea for a video because I get to bust out the Apple Pencil. I get to do some like spinny stuff on it and I get to like write stuff down on my iPad Pro. And it just feels so good that it's encouraged me over time to write more notes, to make more plans for videos, all of this sort of stuff. It also feels so good that I've sort of taken up uh, hand lettering on, on an iPad and I'm also learning how to do like digital artistry and I've, I've wanted to be like a concept artist. You know sort of concept art that you get in games and movies and stuff. I've I just absolutely love that style of art and I'm kind of following some YouTube tutorials trying to learn how to do all of that stuff. So having the iPad Pro for all of that stuff sort of makes sense because it's the Rolls Royce and because you know the very act of using it is so pleasurable. Whereas the iPad is more functional. It's quite nice to use but it's not as pleasurable. So that pleasure factor as weird as it sounds, to me personally justifies this two pounds a week extra price tag. And secondly, because I personally make money by doing tech stuff, so for example, making videos or uh, you know coding or running my business or doing graphic design or, or all of this sort of stuff, I think personally that the fact that the iPad Pro encourages me to use my iPad more, I think that will overall bring me more money than I'm spending this two pounds a week on having an iPad Pro rather than a normal iPad. And again, this is gonna sound weird, but you know, this is a video comparing the iPad Pro and the iPad. And whenever I watch these videos, I always appreciate kind of the, the, the person giving a personal sort of insight into why they use what they use. I think if I get good at hand lettering and get good at like graphic design on an iPad, possibly doing illustration, that would benefit all of my websites, that would benefit my YouTube channel. All of this I think would in the long run make me more money than the two pounds a week that I'm spending on having an iPad Pro rather than an iPad. And of course, the longer that I keep hold of the iPad Pro, um, the more it's gonna, you know, this cost to get spread out over time. So if it becomes one pound a week, you know, cause if I use it for six years, then that's even better. You get what I mean? So yeah, th this was a bit all over the place, but I hope it's given you some sort of insight into whether you should get the normal iPad or the iPad Pro. To summarize again, there is very little difference between the iPad Pro and the iPad, but it's a big jump in price. It's a difference between $300 or 300 pounds and $600 or 600 pounds. For most students, I would probably just recommend you get the normal iPad, don't worry about the iPad Pro. But if you fall into this category of people where you sort of make money using the internet and you sort of, you know, like this luxurious factor and you think that maybe it'll increase the amount of time that you spend on it and therefore that will have a knock on effect and therefore that's probably worth the money, all of this kind of stuff. Bottom line is, if you're even concerned about that in the slightest, definitely go to an Apple store, try them both out and see what you think. Don't take my word for it. But for the most part, for the vast, vast majority of students who are not actively trying to make money on the internet using 
you know, illustration and graphics and, and all, of the, all of this kind of stuff. For the vast majority of students, I would highly recommend you get the normal iPad instead of the iPad Pro. So that concludes this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of this, this sort of format of video. If you have any, any suggestions, uh, they're always much appreciated. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.